Apple needs to apologize for how they mishandled Siri. They need to apologize for false advertising and they need to do a better job about how they advertise their features. And everyone that covers Apple needs to do a better job at actually calling them out when they do something wrong, because this is wrong. Now, first I want you to stay here with me because I have to add some context. I gotta walk you through this because I'm not sure if you've been keeping up with the Apple news, but earlier today, Apple gathered a select few members of the press and issued a statement basically amounting to the fact that one of their hallmark Apple intelligence features, a much improved version of Siri built around Apple intelligence and basically able to understand personal context would be delayed until the coming year. And that is a very roundabout way of saying that this new smarter Siri is one that Apple heavily advertised as one of the key hallmark features of the iPhone 16, and it will not be available on iOS 18. It will not be available until probably iOS 19, and you know when iOS 19 comes out? Well, that won't launch until the iPhone 17 comes out towards the end of this year. So a whole year of this feature being advertised and not being readily available on the iPhone. And this story really isn't new. You may remember my own criticism when I reviewed the iPhone 16, and Apple didn't even have basic Apple intelligence features fully rolled out when they shipped that phone, despite the fact that they revamped their website, remodeled their entire store, and put up billboards everywhere saying, hello, Apple intelligence. They marketed those features as being on the iPhone 16, even though they weren't. And it actually took them months to slowly add these promised and heavily advertised AI features onto these phones. And for the most part, the features they added onto the iPhone, the iPad, the Mac, they work as advertised. These AI features weren't really the ones most people were looking forward to because out of the initial Apple intelligence features, the one that most looked impactful, the ones that might actually affect how users use their phone the most was a smarter Siri that could understand your personal context. This is something that Apple could do that not a lot of other third-party AI services like ChatGPT or Grok could do because your iPhone has so much of your personal data, like your messages, your emails, your contacts, your photos, your music. I mean, this thing has our whole lives digitally stored on it basically at this point. And I tell you all of this to offer an explanation just so you know that this is a big feature, a feature that may have even sold a few iPhones based on the promise that this was a reality. In fact, you can look at Apple CEO's Tim Cook's own words where he stated, that market where Apple intelligence is available have seen stronger year over year sales performance for the iPhone 16 family compared to regions where these AI capabilities were not yet available. There you have it. Apple themselves are admitting here that Apple intelligence features were a key driving force for iPhone 16 sales. And that is why this... What's the name of the guy I had a meeting with a couple of months ago at Cafe Grinnell? You met Zach Wingate at Cafe Grinnell. Is a big problem. You see, Apple still has these ads up. It's an ad that has aired on television. It's an ad that's still up on their YouTube page. And these are features that are still listed on Apple's webpage for the iPhone 16. And before you say, well, this was before that they knew that this feature was going to be delayed. Apple still used this example of this Apple intelligence powered Siri on the new M4 Mac Studio webpage, a product they literally just announced a few days ago. I mean, just consider this scenario. A person sees an ad on YouTube about the new smarter Siri and how it works with Apple intelligence. Then they buy a new iPhone 16. They ask Siri one of these advanced questions and it doesn't get it right. That person has no idea that this feature is even launching later because they just watched an ad. They didn't read the news articles. They didn't read the tiny disclaimer at the bottom of the ad saying that this feature won't be available until sometime this year. No, they just bought the phone because they saw the ad and they tried to use Siri and it failed. And yes, I am fully aware that these are features that are still promised to come out. They will run in a future software update. So technically they are still coming to the iPhone 16, but people may have bought a new Apple product expecting these features not to work tomorrow, not the next week, not six months from now, but today. And yes, I know Apple's history. This isn't the first time they've delayed a software feature or even delayed a product. It isn't even the first time they announced something that has never shipped. But this time it's different. We're not talking about a delay of a few months or talking about a product that was announced, but you can never put money down on it and pre-order it. We're talking about a feature that was promised to ship 
on your new iPhone, on your new iPad, on your new Mac, running today's software versions, not ones promised somewhere down the road. It is clear to me that Apple messed up, big time. And this could have all been avoided. You see, one of the things I respect about Apple as a company is that they usually aren't pressured to launch new products or features just because someone else is doing it. Apple is a company that takes its time to make sure that when they do enter a product category or they add a hardware or software feature, that they get it right and get it right the first time. Obviously, it would be impossible to have a 100% track record in this regard. But for a company like Apple, you do have to respect that when Samsung and others have had years of foldable phone releases, Apple didn't rush out to market with a me too product. I got a phone that folds too. No, they didn't do that. And you can't say that about other companies. Apple launched the Vision Pro. What did you see? And that is the example Apple should have followed with Apple Intelligence. You see, we are still in the very early days of the promise of AI features. And even though AI is capable of amazing feats already, it is by no means a mandatory feature that Apple needed to ship this year. Apple was swept into this AI craze and instead of waiting and innovating, they rushed a Me Too product because it is very clear to me that they rushed out all of these Apple Intelligence features a year before they were supposed to. And so far, every feature has felt half-baked and not fully integrated and not well thought out. Not what we would usually expect from Apple. And this rush to market, this need to be one of the first, has damaged their reputation. For consumers in the know, they think Apple is way behind on AI features. And for consumers out of the know, like the person in my example that bought an iPhone 16 expecting Apple intelligence to just work, well, now they think that Siri is just still dumb and that Apple lied to them. And chances are they will never trust Siri to get an answer right in the future. And the more they use it, the more people use it, the more people don't know that these features are delayed, the more that is true for Apple, it creates this really bad cycle of distrust. Now, you know me, I am a fan of Apple products. This isn't some video of me saying, you can't trust Apple or I'll never recommend their products ever again. Failed products, software bugs, missing features, AI pins that launch at $700 and then the company gets sold to HP and they disable the entire service. So the only thing that a $700 product you can do is now tell you the battery life. In fact, it doesn't do anything. That is unfortunately all too common in the tech world. And for the most part, Apple does usually deliver on their promises, but I do have some things I would like to see Apple do and some friendly advice. First of all, Apple, pull those Siri iPhone ads on your YouTube channel until the feature is ready to launch and remove the advertising from your website. Furthermore, I think it would go a long way for Apple, instead of whispering the delay to news agencies, just be upfront, issue an apology, not to news agencies, but issue an apology to your consumers that this feature is taking longer than you are expecting it to launch. Secondly, Apple, Siri as a product has failed too many times. It has become a meme at this point how often it fails. And now with this delay, Siri's last chance at redemption is over. I mean, even behind the scenes, there's talks about how Apple may need to scrap everything they've worked on with the new Siri and start all over from the beginning. And you know what? Yes, you should do that. Forget Siri, forget its old code base, forget its old servers, its old features, scrap it, get rid of it. Start working on a new assistant with a new name, Apple Assistant has a nice ring to it, and introduce it as the next generation AI voice assistant. Once you've solved all these problems, of course, because people will forget the bad user experience they had with the old Siri, and they will attribute only positive feelings towards this new assistant. Lastly, Apple, and the people watching this video, you can take this part with a grain of salt because you may think I have some bias here, but Apple, you need to stop surrounding yourself with so many yes men and yes women. Listen, lately I've been seeing a lot of people getting invited to Apple events or people that get Apple products early that just aren't that critical or they sugarcoat a lot of things in their coverage. I've seen outlets that are fair and critical also excluded more and more from covering Apple products. And I think this is creating a sort of echo chamber in the Apple sphere. Sphere. Listen, I've been covering Apple for a long time now. And while I'm sure I could not cover certain leaks or certain stories or cover Apple products in a way that gains Apple's approval more, 
I have always had just one responsibility, to be as honest as I can to my audience. And one thing about my channel is I have never been invited to an Apple event and I have never received a product for free from Apple, despite what many of you think. And I would never alter what I say or make videos that I didn't want to make to gain, not even Apple, but just any company's approval. Now listen, I don't have a big ego. In fact, I tend to think the reason I'm not invited to Apple events or really a lot of technology events is because uh, I just think my videos are awful. They're shot bad, they're not interesting, and they aren't really that good. Like, I, I, I don't think Apple should be extending an invite to me because I, I just suck. And there are people that are probably way more deserving than I am that should just be invited to the events. But there's a lot of people that shouldn't be. There's a lot of people that don't give Apple the fair criticism they deserve. And there would be people out there that cover Apple that would be afraid to even make a video like this for asking Apple to do something that's a little bit uncomfortable, asking them to apologize. That is something that could rub someone the wrong way. It could, it could make a awkward relationship with a company. So a lot of people wouldn't do that. A lot of people wouldn't call out Apple on their mistakes. But again, my loyalty isn't to Apple, even though I, I like Apple products. I got an Apple Watch on. It's one of my favorite products. I lost a lot of weight from this thing. I, I, I'm, I'm phrasing this awfully. I got an iPhone, right? I love my iPhone. I, I work on the Mac. I would not be able to run this channel without my Mac. I like Apple products. They work really well. And out of all the options out there, I still think they're the best. Finally, to end this video, instead of criticism now, I would like to offer Apple some praise. Now stay with me here because even though Apple got a ton wrong here and they should apologize, there are some things they did right and things that are admirable. The modern world right now, it's very fast paced. It's constant information. It's a constant controversy machine. I fully believe a lot of companies without Apple's reputation would have made the mistake of not only announcing a feature like this before it was ready, but also launching a product or a software feature before it was ready just to get it out there and then deal with the consequences later and bank on the fact that most people would just forget that they ever released it in a bad state. Apple could have easily released this new version of Siri with a ton of bugs and something that got critical information wrong and they didn't even under all of this pressure. They still chose to delay this Siri and that does deserve to be applauded. Even though they probably should not have announced it until it was ready, at least they have the understanding that yes, they have to get features like this right, especially when it's dealing with users' personal information if they are going to launch them at all. I also don't think most people realize how much Apple is tying one arm behind their back with any of their AI efforts. The reason why Apple seems to be so far behind other companies is because they do not collect vast amounts of your personal data. Apple is one of the only companies out there in this AI space that still has a strong privacy stance. Nearly every other AI model or assistant is just scraping every single bit of data you feed it with no regard for your personal privacy. It actually makes you wonder why Apple is still even fighting this privacy fight where it seems like so many people have just given up on it. If, if you talk to most people, they kind of don't care about privacy anymore. I see comments all the time that even claim Apple is stealing your data when they're not. So in a way, especially in a world where controversies pass in the blink of an eye and integrity really doesn't seem to matter anymore, Apple could just reverse their privacy stance tomorrow. They could collect all the data on everyone's iPhone, a billion of their users, and then train their AI models, and then take all that information and sell it to the highest bidder and make a ton of money. They could do that, and yet they don't. They're still fighting this human privacy fight, a fight the rest of us have kind of thrown in the towel on. And Apple is out there, still what I think is fighting a good fight. I wish more people realized that, but chances are, most people clicked off this video within the first minute because who even has the attention span anymore to watch a video this long? Especially without a lot of the video editing tricks that people do to keep your attention, like constant sounds and clicks and camera angle changes and wacky British accents that some of us just aren't bored and I, I, I messed up on that one too. So not even that good. Anyway, those are my thoughts. This video doesn't really matter. It's not like Apple's gonna take my advice, but hey, you, you watched it. So I guess that's cool. If you didn't make it this far, thanks for hearing me out. I'm curious to actually hear your comments uh, below. 
What do you guys think about this whole situation? What do you think about the current state of Apple intelligence? What do you think about the current state of Apple and technology in general and our very angry disinformation state of social media and all the fakeness? It's, it's all so fake. Everything seems so fake nowadays. So I just want to be real with this one because I think we all hate the fakers out there. I'm not going to name names, but there's a lot. So hopefully you liked it and uh, don't worry. I'm still going to make tech videos. It's not, this is just another video. I'll see you in the next one.